Well then, here we go. We're going back together after having the stock. I've always just got to warm up to the oil. I've also had my bump uh, blueprinted by the very professional. Um, and this is why I put my R10 on. Um, a couple of my friends said you definitely need to get it on there. I spoke to John. He's okay with it. So what we've had done, blueprinted obviously, um, adjustments to the trigger, regulator, etc, etc, the hammer. Um, but on, on the one that I wanted to do and I asked John if he could make me a, um, what they call a toaster at the end. So what I've done, the muzzle has been shortened, um, sorry, the outer shroud has been shortened down. And the reason why I wanted that doing is it basically when I do field target shooting, um, there's going to be no, there's got no excuses then. It's just come straight out the barrel. But this, so the barrel's been threaded, and um, as you see, the toaster has been, can screw directly onto that. Now the sound of that is uh, it's quite a bit of a crack. And if you have a listen, you will hear it go. Uh, quite a crack but um, it's not meant to be this is just for me field target that's quite a bang right so what but what I wanted doing is the shroud that got taken off the barrel as you will see in a minute um, which is just here what is what John's done is cleverly made that into a silencer so you'll see in a moment when I fit it on so Really, I've got quite a few options I can have with the with the R10 now regarding the end and the silence, which I'll just show you. So if I take this off, that John made. Um, I say that's just for field target. Um, I can have it. It's got loads of options. I can have it just as a carbine model which again is going to be quite light, so no need to fire it but that looks beautiful gun carbine mode right the other option I've got then is when I go obviously pest controlling is take that off and I can actually the part that John took off the shroud as I said, it's been made into a silencer, so we'll put this on. It's very quiet actually, quieter than what I thought, so if you listen to this, we'll just take a quick shot. That's a hell of a lot quieter than it was. Um, obviously this can go on the end, the original muzzle brake can go on the end. So that now is exactly the same level, the same length should I say. Um, is when we first brought the gun. So that's that's uh, two options we've got there. So that looks pretty damn good. Um, obviously when John tests them, he tests them to each um, pellet. And it's like a lot of BSAs, they tend to go for the GSB, uh, they don't match up to GSB pellets. Um, Bisley Magnums turn out to be the best, and Accupels on my particular gun, but that might not be for all. Um, again, when I want to go vermin shooting, we've got that on. I could, in fact, put this on the carbine, but I could actually have it like the full length gun with the uh, BSA BC silencer on it, or variable choke as they call it. And if you listen to this, that's really quiet. Um, again, I'll show you what that looks like. So this basically is this, the original gun length with the BSA variable uh, choke on there which looks you know as it should um, and then I've also went to the show at Newark at the weekend um, need to get a bit of exercise so I went for a walk round and uh, talking to the chaps on the Milborough stall and brought myself a hug it. Silencers, I like to call them, call them what they will, variable chokes, uh, do the same job at the end of the day. Um, which, it doesn't look too bad actually, 
looks quite good and if you listen to the sound again and that's fart isn't it really um, again we'll have a look that close up I think the gun looks pretty quite it's quite nice with that uh, hug it silencer on um, I say they, they retail at 85 quid um, and then we've got the other option. I say that's the full length barrel with um, John's homemade silencer, and obviously a silencer of my choice on the top. But don't forget, um, if you don't want it that long, shooting out um, beyond the Land Rover and stuff, and shoot out the passenger side window. So you've obviously got a driver, a lot of vermin controls done like that nowadays. Um, take the back bit off and have it as a carbine model, either with the hug it, um, which again I'll shoot very quiet, extremely quiet actually, um, and that's what it looks like. So if you're interested in getting a an, uh, BSAR 10. My personal opinion is the barrel length is good, but it's too long if you have a silencer on the end, which I found um, for pest control. So um, and that's why one of the reasons I had it shortened. Plus, for uh, field target, um, an, an inline barrel with thread on the end, so you can have something on the end, it's going to be a lot better than attaching it to the shroud, where if you have any bit of um, eccentricity, it could be out of line. And then you could get clipping. Not that they should do, but you, you can get that. Um, I think at the end of the day, if you're going into field target, um, if you get a decent, you got a, a decent gun. Um, you've done your homework. You've done your sights. Get a good set of sights. I've got some AB32 by 56 um, SWAT, the uh, Leapers SWAT. Fantastic scope. I've tried all sorts. I've tried the sign winders. Um, the uh, Devons, Hawks, and um, I just these are just fantastic, fantastic optics. Um, coated in emerald, so you get non reflective. Um, and this is the carbine model with the um, BSA variable choke. Again, I fire it. Obviously, got no pelleting. Very quiet. You're not going to end that 15 yards away, you won't hear that. Um, so, there you have it. Blueprinted gun from John Balkett. I say, if you're interested in a BSR 10, um, there we go. Look, that's this is with having the back, with having the shroud shortened to the same length as the barrel. Because the, the barrel, obviously, when you, when you when you buy it, I don't know if you know, but when you buy it, the shroud comes to there. You've got that much length, four inches, yeah, hundred mil um, extra. So if that's out of line, you can clip. I mean, the early days of the R10s were meant to do that, I mean mine never has, um, but um, this totally eliminates it. Um, that's the setup I'll be using for field target, or um, I'll probably put my, uh, as they call it, a toaster, I don't know if you can see that, it's um, threaded and grooved to match the groove on the, um, just above the, where the uh, bottle goes in, if you notice it's got like a uh, baffle built on top of the rosewood cap and I just wanted something to match that and it just looks really it, well in my opinion it looks uh, spot on and that's what I'll be using for uh, the field target work um, I say the stock I've done if you notice it's come out the grains come out in the walnuts absolutely brilliant and I say hot oil that's what I used um, why ward it in between every coat? I say you think that you're taking it off, but you're not. You you do take a little bit off, but you, 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 you're making it smooth and, it, and the oil gets into the grain. So there you have it. The BSA R10 carbine with the toaster fitted. Um, with the option of John's silencer. You see there. Um, threaded on the end, so that fits on to the end of the carbine. And then you can have another silencer if you so wish. 
to make it even more quiet as I just proved, as I just showed you. Or you can have take the toaster off, have the original muzzle guard, or take the toaster off again and just have a silencer straight on the end of the barrel. Um, you're going to get no aiming issues whatsoever. I'm going to give it a shot now. I'm going to take it out in the garden. Um, probably put under shots for it because um, I've had to put the scope back on. Um, quick look at the scope. Good weight as well to the scope. I think it's 700 grams, which is not too bad for a, um, a side wheel focusing scope these days. It also comes with a sunshade. Um, John's um, tested it, and as we'll, we'll have a look. Um, there you go. Bisley Magnums. Pretty much 50 yards this was done at. Um, day state. Heavies, obviously coughed a couple of times there because they're absolutely spot on. Didn't like the AA field, bit hit and miss. Um, they're pretty good. The Exterminator Defiant, say two again, but not too bad. It's a good group. Um, impressed with the Crossman Acupels, one flyer, that's all, out of ten shots. But basically, I think um, I'll be going with the. Uh, Bisley Magnums. So, um, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, all you BSA fans out there, I'm a big a big lover of BSA guns. Had them for years and years and years. Also had a few air arms, but uh, I had my preferences. Um, BSA. And don't forget, you know, when your gun's tuned in like this, all you've got to do is move one millimetre this end, and at 50 yards, it's like two centimetres. And everyone sort of blames the gun, but you've got to think about yourself, you know. If you just if you pull the trigger, it, if you if you try and move your trigger finger, it affects the rest of your hand. So rest in your palm, you can rest your palm and just move that finger. Get everything set up, and because you'll be amazed how much just one little millimeter of movement this end of the gun. Well, thanks for tuning in. And, uh, I'll um, bring my target. Yeah.